because we've only just scratched the surface of, the, of what the Bible's saying about forgiveness, that, okay, God forgave you, so now you have to have a willingness to forgive others. And if you don't have a willingness to forgive others, don't approach God for forgiveness because he'll throw you in jail. So, We can't repay the forgiveness. We have to understand that. We have to understand. The key thing to Christianity is simply this. You must understand that you are a sinner, and you must understand that you yourself cannot fix that. It can only be fixed by the death of Christ. You can only be forgiven through Christ, and you then pass that on. This highlights the New Testament teachings that's in the person of Christ himself and that there is forgiveness. He alone has the power to forgive sins. It's in Matthew 2, 5 to 10. It's in his death that is redemptive, Matthew 26, 28, Mark 10, 45. And in his blood, that's the basis of a new covenant. His blood, his shedding of blood is what established the new covenant that we fall under not the old covenant. See, so much of our Christianity, so much of the way that we form our our way of thinking is so Old Testament and is so immature because that's what the Old Testament is. It's all about immaturity. It's all about telling the children step by step what they need to do. And Jesus said, no, no, no. You can be mature, love God, and love your neighbor, and that sums all of it up. If you do those two things, you're being mature in Christ because the rest will fall into place. But we look for this system called religion, and we work through that system because we're like children. When Jesus says, grow up, have have a a spirit, a willingness to forgive, no matter what, you got to understand, Jesus forgave you for all of your sins. Let's define sin. Theology defines sin as this, missing the mark. The mark is Jesus. Every time you're not just like Jesus, you're sinning. Sin is not just because you murdered somebody or because you cussed or because you, you, you did something. I don't know. That's not just what sin is. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is not being like Jesus Christ. We are all sinners most of the time. So we have to establish this to see the complexity, the hugeness of the forgiveness that we're being given. And then look at all of our little petty issues that we're not willing to forgive and go, wow, the Bible tells me that I'm supposed to have a forgiving spirit, irregardless of how huge or how small that issue is. The Bible says you have to forgive everyone and everything. And it doesn't budge. We're going to get a little bit deeper into that. It's through him that one can enter into a living experience of forgiveness. You experience forgiveness. It's Hebrews 9, verse 15 and verse 22. So forgiveness is inseparable from the proclamation of Jesus Christ. Acts 13, Ephesians 1, Colossians 1, and 1 John 2. So I want to go through um, five simple uh, experiences, the Christian experience of what forgiveness is, because I think we need to shape uh, in our minds exactly what the Christian experience of forgiveness is so that we kind of grasp exactly where uh, the Bible's going here. So Christian understanding of forgiveness is this. It reflects the character of God as one who pardons and enters into a meaningful relationship with his creature producing a change in human relationship with him. That's the change into the new covenant from the old covenant of immaturity into the new covenant of maturity, the change that happened because we're now able to be forgiven. This has been done in the costly anguish of the cross of Christ. You have to deal with Jesus. Like, it's one thing to go, okay, I believe in God, but you have to deal with Jesus because Jesus Christ is the center, the core foundation to our faith. So you have to deal with this. Two, 
It expresses the efficiency of divine atonement and reconciliation of man. Those who truly realize, I, I underline the word truly like six times, realize their condition as sinners know that God can remove sin and redeem sinners. This must be experienced, not just comprehended intellectually. You can't just intellectually go, yes, I know that I'm a sinner. You must also experience that. The Bible actually says that usually involves emotion and it usually involves weeping. In Christ's death, sin is condemned and absolutely judged, and yet Christ bears the penalty on our behalf by his sacrifice. Three, for the Apostle Paul, we got to deal with what Paul says about this. The bare concept of forgiveness does not convey deeply enough the full consequences. Instead, he speaks of being what he calls justified. Remember how I said that when you believe in your heart and you profess with your mouth that you are then justified. It's a one-time thing, justified. It's not a, like a multiple thing where uh, we have a, a joke that we say where, you know, um, there's, there's an Arminian side and a Calvinist side, and we always joke with the Arminians saying, uh, you know, if you drive your car off a cliff and you swear on the way down, you just lost your salvation. So watch what we say. Because um, some people actually believe to that extent. Okay, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that. I believe, and what they believe is that there's multiple times of being justified. But Paul doesn't say that. Paul says that you are justified once upon truly believing, per- believing in your heart, professing with your mouth, not just professing with your mouth and having some kind of a spiritual experience. You have to believe in your heart at the core of who you are. That's why the Bible says you'll be judged from your heart. So it's to be treated as righteous, treated as righteous. Okay, Christians, you are not righteous by your own power. You are only seen as righteous because God looks at you through the eyes of Christ who has paid the penalty for your sin. You cannot attain righteousness. I don't care how good you think you are or what rules you follow or what magazines you read or don't read. You cannot attain righteousness by a list of rules. The only way that you can attain righteousness is through Jesus Christ. The forgiveness that Jesus Christ offers to us with his death on the cross. That's where religiosity comes in. Wait till, this is going to rock your world tonight when I get into that section of this. Now, if you don't believe me, look up Romans 4, verse 5. It's a gift of God's grace, Romans 3, verse 24. A present experience, 1 Corinthians 4, 4. For those who have faith in a relationship with Christ, Romans 3, 26. This justification is the positive relationship that forgiveness provides. So it's through the forgiveness that Christ gives us that we are then justified. We're almost done the technical stuff. Okay, number four, forgiveness implies that God has reconciled man to himself. That's found in Ephesians 2, verse 14 to 17. The outcome is peace with God. Philippians 4, 7, Colossians 3, 15, a reconciliation accomplished by the cross, Colossians 1, 20. This is the implication of all of the references in Romans 5. I highly recommend you read Romans 5 dealing with justification. Forgiveness, number five, the last one, includes the theme of fellowship with God, 1 Thessalonians 1, the Son, 1 Corinthians 1, and the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. It's expressed in the Pauline phrases, in Christ or in the Lord. Paul is expressing forgiveness with those phrases. It's used 164 times by Paul alone. In effect, the whole nature of the Christian life revolves around forgiveness. And what did the scriptures say? So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. That doesn't mean your immediate brother only. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Ephesians 4 talks about the unity in the body of Christ, that we are to come together together 